you, Mary Lou MacDonald. Corla. Karen Corla, when government came to draft its budget, it did so against the backdrop of great crisis and challenges for Ireland. It was written against the reality of lost jobs, lost incomes and the tragedy of lost lives. This pandemic is undeniably the most serious crisis we have faced in living memory. And as Brexit looms large on the horizon, there is justifiably a great deal of public anxiety and uncertainty. This was an emergency budget and the emergency is real. COVID-19 and Brexit, two enormous crises in their own right, taken together create unprecedented challenge for us. We were told that this budget would deliver the certainty that workers, communities and business are yearning for. However, behind the hype of the billions, we see that so many people are once again let down, left out and shortchanged. Fwik aglaidu dineketa mil chidine eran pup, fwik de kiasori, fwik de kurum lani, agus ordu igonica carbon. Nothing but more cuts for the quarter of a million of people on the PUP, nothing for renters, nothing for childcare, and a hike in carbon taxes. I, Count Corla, have no doubt that we will overcome and prevail. We will overcome and prevail because the Irish people have demonstrated the very best of who we are over the past seven months. They have risen to the disruption, the pain and loss wrought by COVID-19 with kindness, with compassion, with togetherness and resilience. We have seen real social solidarity. And the task for government yesterday was to meet that standard, the standard set by our people. And while the budget did many things that we welcomed, in fact, many things that we argued for ourselves, it fell short of that standard. The pandemic has shone a bright spotlight on the things that are wrong in our society. The perpetual housing crisis, the never ending overcrowding of our hospitals and the record waiting lists for treatment, the lack of fairness in our economy, especially for low paid workers, and the travesty of denying the state pension to workers who have done their bit and paid their way by the age of 65. The crisis revealed the importance of affordable childcare to families and to the functioning of a modern, sustainable economy. It also laid bare the heartbreaking consequences for people with disabilities, their families and their carers of decades of poor funding and resourcing in the services upon which they rely. So the pandemic should have been a wake-up call for this government to fix these things with determination and energy. The budget was an opportunity to begin the work of righting these big wrongs while ensuring that workers, families, communities and business have the supports they may need to make it through this crisis. An opportunity to make a real and meaningful difference for people who have had their lives turned upside down. An opportunity to provide people with certainty in times of great turbulence. But you failed to grasp this opportunity and you got this badly wrong, Taoiseach. Minister Donoghue yesterday described this budget as one of hope and confidence. And there is no doubt at all that hope and confidence are exactly what our people need. However, to generate that hope and that confidence, you have to deliver real, tangible, felt improvements. Not just slogans, not just big figures, and certainly not just sound bites. When you look beyond the headline figures of yesterday's budget, you would be hard pressed to see how it delivers on the Minister's claim. Because the reality is, while you talk up big figures, many will only see crumbs from the table. If the Minister really wanted to provide hope and confidence, he would have think done things very differently. And let me say this, Sinn Féin in government would have done things differently. 
We would have given that certainty to workers, to families and to small business so that they can get through this crisis. And we would also have planned to rebuild in a better, in a fairer and in a stronger way. Our first priority is for those who are struggling, those who are just clinging on, having lost their jobs and income as a result of this pandemic. We would have reversed the cut to the pandemic unemployment payment. That's what you should have done, Taoiseach, but you chose not to. In fact, you're going to cut this payment again in January, and then you're going to end it in April. The cut is mean, it's economically short-sighted, and it shows that this government, despite all of the rhetoric yesterday in your speeches, simply don't get it. You don't really grasp the hardship facing families who have to make ends meet at the end of each week. When the cost of living is already sky high and when utility bills are being hiked up yet again. You don't get that they still have to put food on the table and provide for their children. And you don't get that they still have to pay the mortgage or pay the rent. Your failure to restore the PUP exposes those who have lost their incomes through no fault of their own to a greater risk of poverty. It also drains money from the local economy, which has serious consequences for local businesses who are already under huge pressure to stay open and to keep their staff at work. Confirmation of the Christmas bonus, while welcome, is no consolation prize, Taoiseach. Your cuts to the wage subsidy scheme have made it not fit for purpose. And remember this, Taoiseach, we work constructively with government to ensure that we had an effective fit for purpose wage subsidy scheme. But that's now not the case. The scheme excludes 153,000 low paid workers in, it, in their entirety. Employees with a gross weekly pay of less than €151.50 are not eligible for any subsidy whatsoever. What's that all about? Businesses will now only receive €203 Euro per qualifying worker instead of €410. How do you stand over that, Taoiseach? It's simply not good enough and I think your approach has been very short-sighted. All of us know and have acknowledged the importance of maintaining the relationship between workers and their employers in a state of readiness for when the economy picks up again. And I believe that a thoughtful government would invest properly in sustaining that connection because it makes economic sense. We need creative ideas that have a real chance of reviving hospitality and tourism. These sectors have been laid low by this emergency. Bar workers, waiters, restaurant staff, tour guides are amongst those who have taken a frightening financial hit. Tens of thousands of these workers haven't seen a day's work since March. The businesses that they work for have their backs to the wall and are literally struggling to survive. So the reduction in VAT for this sector is welcome, but you made heavy weather of a Taoiseach. You certainly took your time. Sinn Féin proposed a tourism and hospitality voucher scheme back in June. This idea would stimulate activity in the economy by injecting hundreds of millions of euro directly into the tills of businesses that are struggling. Our scheme is detailed, it's fully costed, and it has the backing of key industry figures. As well as supporting thousands of jobs, it would have allowed people who otherwise would have stayed at home due to financial constraints to get out at the appropriate time and to spend money and to enjoy themselves. But you didn't take this idea on board. But just as you came to the idea of a VAT reduction late in the day, you could still adopt this scheme now and make a real difference to these sectors. During the election in February, housing was the number one issue on the doorsteps. 
The stories of those in housing distress were all very, very depressingly familiar. Couples disheartened because the price of a new home is beyond them, but who didn't qualify for council housing. Other families, after years on local authority housing lists, waiting for a home that never materialised. And young people paying extortionate rents to landlords. No light at the end of the tunnel because, you see, successive governments abdicated to the private market the state's responsibility for the provision of housing. And that's what's happened on the watch of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. So this bu budget could really have been a watershed moment for housing, but that moment was squandered. Sinn Féin has said that we need to see the delivery of affordable and social housing on a scale never seen before. And that means 20,000 social and affordable homes in 2021. That's the level of delivery that we need. Minister McGrath stated that even when the state was much poorer, we still managed to build public housing and that we would do so again. Unfortunately, the housing measures announced do not match the spirit of his words. A housing scheme that puts money into the pockets of developers and does nothing to deliver homes that are affordable to the average worker. And I have to tell you, I had to rub my eyes in disbelief when I saw and realised that this budget, in net terms, only provides for 593 real social homes in 2021. 593. And I can only imagine what those families waiting years for a home will think when they discover this. But I can tell you, they won't feel that they've been heard. They won't feel that they matter to your government. This budget is disgracefully silent on the needs of renters. Nothing in this budget to bring down sky-high rents or to prevent renters from being evicted. So what we got was a billion for landlords and zero for renters. Sinn Féin would reintroduce a ban on notices to quit and evictions. We would cut rents and ensure no rent hike for three years. Now that is the kind of direct action that renters needed in your budget. But instead, government has hung renters out to dry once again. The reality is that what was announced yesterday for housing was simply a blueprint for more of the same. It will ensure that the housing crisis created by Fianna Fáil and deepened by Fine Gael will continue. It will guarantee that the struggles of those couples, those hopeless families and those exploited young workers will go on and on. And that, Taoiseach, is not acceptable. The pandemic has shown that the model of childcare provision being followed by government isn't working and that a reimagining re of how childcare services are provided in this state is absolutely urgent and essential. And yet, there's no plan to improve childcare services in the budget. Nothing for families paying the equivalent of a second mortgage in fees. Nothing for the 27,000 childcare workers on low pay. Nothing for service providers who have struggled to keep the lights on and the doors open during this crisis. Now is the time to start making childcare affordable for working parents. So Sinn Féin showed how fees could be slashed by two thirds over the course of two budgets, but you chose to ignore that. Now is also the time to deliver a living wage for childcare workers. Sinn Féin would have immediately increased the pay of childcare workers to 12 euros and 30 cents per hour. You also ignored that. And so this morning, parents and childcare workers and service providers will be looking on at this budget with utter dismay and disappointment. Our health service was buckling under immense pressure long before anybody uttered or heard the word COVID-19. 
Decades of underinvestment and mismanagement by Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael and years of bad health policies have left our hospitals and our people cruelly exposed during this pandemic. That is your legacy. The failures to increase bed capacity, particularly intensive care beds, is a damning indictment of both your parties uh, in your times of leading government. You even failed to use the vital time that the lockdown brought you in the spring to get more ICU beds into the system. It was identified as far back as 2009 that we needed to double our ICU capacity, but we actually entered this pandemic with even less intensive care beds than we had more than a decade ago. So if ever there was a time for a government to realise the importance of a strong public health service and to invest properly in it, that time is surely now. But no, even during the throes of the greatest health emergency in living memory, your government refuses to give our health services the resources that it needs. You refuse to do what needs to be done, and yet it can be done. We can have a health service that meets the needs of our people. In our budget proposals, Sinn Féin showed how we would begin that work of transforming our health service. We would have ensured certainty for our hospitals by delivering a net increase of new beds of 1,100 acute beds and an extra 100 intensive care beds and an extra 2,500 nurses. We would have provided the investment needed to tackle dangerously mounting treatment waiting lists, to provide adequately for mental health services and cancer care while meeting the challenges posed by this virus. And I have to say, Taoiseach, it is utterly scandalous that this budget did not provide medical card coverage for terminally ill patients. Your budget only guarantees a continuing sense of crisis in our health service as we face the second wave of COVID-19. A net 41 additional ICU, an extra 500 acute beds is not even half of what we need to turn things around and ensure that our hospitals are ready and prepared for what is to come. Now in the grip of COVID-19 was the time to strengthen our health service and to turn the tide of years of doing things the wrong way. But you failed again to do the right thing and it will be ordinary people who will pay the price for that failure. On top of this, you didn't deliver pay equality for nurses. At this stage, that's shameful, Taoiseach. I'm sure while they appreciate the recognition and support the superpowers of our nurses do not extend to an ability to pay their bills or feed their families with applause. And of course, it's not only nurses you have failed, but other public sector workers too, who entered their posts after 2011. These workers, including Section 39 workers, have stood at the front line during this pandemic. And it's high time that this government stood up and delivered fair play, and fair pay. It was very telling that the move you have made on pay is in the form of a miserly 10 cent increase in the minimum wage. This is an insult to thousands of low paid workers who kept us going in the darkest days of the pandemic. And you will recall that almost overnight many of these workers were certainly classified as essential. When the chips were down, it wasn't highly paid bankers or corporate landlords or millionaire business executives that we turned to. No, in our time of need, we turned to those who stock the shelves in supermarkets. We turned to delivery van drivers. We turned to supply chain workers and we turned to our cleaners. And the lesson was learned very quickly. These workers, you see, were always essential. And they are the very workers who rely on a meaningful increase in the minimum wage in order to pay their bills, put food on the table and make their rent or mortgage. And they are also the very people that have been left behind in your budget. 
It's lost on no one either that all of this is happening at a time of pay bumps for TDs and when your government has gone on a hiring spree of high-paid special advisers. The lack of fairness, the lack of genuine solidarity with people who have lost so much is truly staggering. Only last week I shared with you, Taoiseach, the poignant words of those people who felt swept under the carpet by government during this pandemic and who found themselves on their knees. These were the stories of citizens with disabilities, their families and their carers. We have to remember that the disability sector was grossly underfunded and under-resourced ever before COVID-19. This emergency just brought things to a head. And I want to welcome the allocation of 100 million euro for disability services. But I have to say that it never should have taken this long to do right by these citizens. I want to commend them. I want to commend their families, their carers and their service providers because they have taken a stand. People with disabilities were not only the forgotten people of this pandemic, but also the forgotten people by government after government in budget after budget. So much more needs to be done. This budget allocation must be the first step in ensuring that people with disabilities, their families and those who care for them are never forgotten again. The allocation of €8 million Euros for the Stardust inquest is also very welcome. It's something that Sinn Féin has repeatedly called for. These families have fought long and hard for four decades to achieve justice for their lost children. And I'm sure that we all hope that they will see that day of justice through the inquests. The absence of fairness in this budget is again seen in your decision to hike the carbon tax by almost 30%. I believe this is a lazy cop-out by your government, Taoiseach. Instead of going after the big polluters, you decide to place the burden on workers and families. It applies to all the things people can't do without. So, petrol to get them to work, gas to cook their meals, home heating oil to keep them warm. It strips away the benefit of the very modest increase to the fuel allowance. And without affordable alternatives, a carbon tax won't save the planet and it won't reduce our emissions but it will make the, make the lives of struggling workers even harder. Similarly, the increase in motor tax will affect those who can least afford a tax hike, as well as those in rural areas who are heavily dependent on cars for transport. So these are all the wrong calls and they display a real lack of progressive thinking in addressing the challenges facing our environment. At the general election, the issue of the state pension was a huge concern, as you know. We made it very clear that every worker should have the right to retire at the age of 65 with their state pension, if they so wish, and that remains our position. As we face into an unemployment crisis, particularly a youth unemployment crisis, it beggars belief that the government would insist on 65-year-olds signing on for a job seeker's payment or being forced out the door to work while waiting on their pension. I think that flies in the values of the face of the values of the Irish people. People at the age of 65 have earned the right to be treated with respect and dignity. It's their heavy lifting, their lifetime of work that enabled us to build schools and hospitals and roads. So they've put in their shifts, they've paid their dues and their taxes, and you should have done the right thing in this budget and restored the state pension age to 65. The pension age should never have been increased in the first place. And this was an opportunity to end this disrespect shown to our older workers. And I am very disappointed that you didn't take this opportunity, Taoiseach. And I wonder how you explain this to, have, to people who have worked hard all their lives and who you continue to deprive of that basic right. We have an entire generation of younger people who have known little beyond 
economic crisis for most of their adult lives. First, an economic crash created by greedy bankers, and now a pandemic that has brought so many plans and aspirations to a halt. The challenges facing the class of 2020 echo those faced by the class of 2008, who stepped out of school or college into a working life surrounded by a collapsing economy, crumbling job prospects and very little hope for the future. That was a crisis made all the worse by the policies of austerity and cuts inflicted on workers and families by Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael governments. And now the young people of the austerity era who saw their potential and hopes quenched by the recklessness of those at the top and by the failure of government are joined now by the young people of the pandemic. A decade ago, young people were scattered like wild geese to Australia, to America, to Canada. And the reflex action of governments like yours has always been to export the problem of youth unemployment. But now, even the last resort of the lonely departure lounge is cut off because of the global nature of today's crisis. So you can't export the problem this time. You have to face up to it with ambition and new ideas. We have to do much better by our young people. We have to give them a future at home. And there is a real risk that their opportunities and their chance at progress and prosperity will be swallowed up by your poorly thought out response to this pandemic that they will remain locked out of home ownership and locked out of decent work, decent jobs, decent careers, that they will continue to pay extortionate rents or live at home with their parents right into their 30s. Young people, you see, can't afford a government that repeats the disastrous mistakes of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael over the last decade. They want a future that's decent, that's safe, that's secure. They want a chance at making it. And I think we can all agree that that is precisely what they deserve. So why no action from your government? After all, it's young people who will bear the brunt of the choices and the mistakes that are made today. Where is the vision? Where is the ambition? And more importantly, where is the plan to meet head on the crisis of youth unemployment now facing Ireland? Where now should our young people turn for their sense of hope, for their sense of confidence and their sense of purpose? They won't find it in your budget and they won't see it in your government. The failure to deliver a strategy for dealing with youth unemployment is a monumental mistake that will come back to haunt our society. And let's not forget that shanuckle, mull on oiga agus chukishi. Young people, when properly supported and encouraged, can be and will be the engine of our economic and social recovery. And we won't stand by and allow the potential of another generation of young people to be wasted. We need action now to secure their futures. Taoiseach, this should have been a budget that laid the foundations of a stronger, fairer and better Ireland. A budget to provide relief for workers and families, resilience for our public services and the start of a recovery, a plan to rebuild. Instead, what you have delivered is a stopgap budget, one that will see us standing still instead of moving forward. We said that the great danger now was not that the government would do too much, but that you would do too little. We said that the Ireland that emerges from this crisis would be decided by decisions taken now. This is not only a time for big spending to achieve short-term outcomes, it is a time for big investment in the things that really matter to ordinary people. An opportunity amidst all the volatility and uncertainty to reset our society and rebuild our economy in a way that ensures that our people are never again so badly exposed. And this is the opportunity that you have chosen not to take. You've passed it up for more of the same at a time when more of the same was the very last thing that our people needed. 
Workers and families are crying out for a fresh start. After a decade in which the banks, landlords and vested interests were prioritised by Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, this budget should have been the budget where finally the well-being of ordinary people was put first. But your refusal to do this reminds us that we need change like we never needed it before. And the pandemic hasn't dampened the appetite for change that was so strong last February. In fact, it strengthened it. Things are difficult and gloomy now, but I will never give up on the belief that workers and families can have a good, prosperous and safe life in the aftermath of this crisis. Giving up is not a runner. The goal of building a stronger, fairer, a better Ireland still shines brightly in these difficult times. And what a pity, such a pity, such a wasted opportunity that your budget fails to advance that vision of our country's future.